happy Sunday, Chappelle. We would like to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are tuning in on this morning. Proverbs 20 and 7 says, the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we bless your name on this morning, Father God. Lord, we thank you for rising again on another Sunday morning, Lord God, just to give your name all the praise, glory, and honor that is due you, Father God. Lord, we ask a special blessing over the fathers today, Father God. Lord, we ask that you continue to use them, to lead them and guide them and provide for their families, Father God. Lord, we thank you for the shepherd, the father of this house, Pastor Gary. Lord, we ask you to continue to be with him, be in the midst of all that he's done, Father God. We thank you for the years that he shepherded this house, Father God, the lives that he's touched, Lord God, and the souls that were saved. Lord, we ask that you show up and show out, be in the midst of this service, Father God. We pray that everything that is done is pleased to your sight. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Now we turn it over to our hymn choir.
Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Chappelle. Continue to put your hands together. Man, give us a little bit more of that. I don't know what you're going through on the day, but I want you to keep pressing on and pressing on. Keep on fighting on. If your money is funny, I want you to keep on fighting on. If you're dealing with sickness in your body, I want you to keep on fighting on. If you're dealing with issues in your marriage, I want you to keep on fighting on. James said they count it all joys, the trials and the tribulations that we face in life. So fight on. Keep on keeping on. Put your sword in your hands. That's the word of the Lord. Keep it in your hands. When the word says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. for blessing us, going to praise and worship on this morning, for letting the Lord use you in such a special and a mighty way. Hallelujah. So again, happy Father's Day to all of the dads that are out there. We pray that your day is blessed going forward. We pray that God will continue to wrap his loving arms around you. At this time, church family, I'm going to ask that you keep the following individuals in prayer. Sister Kayshawn Gilliam, who is the daughter of Sister Pearlie Gilliam, we ask for special prayer for her during this time. Also for Sister Barbara Roberts, I mentioned a few weeks ago that she had not one, but two surgeries. And then we just got news on this past week that she's now underwent a third surgery. So we're asking for definitely for God's healing hand, his miraculous hand upon her during this time. Sister Roberts, we are praying for you. We, your church family is here for you in whatever capacity we're needed. Also, church family, uh, Brother Malachi Pauling was in the hospital over about a week ago. Um, so we are asked for a special prayer for him and his wife, Sister Evelyn Pauling, and their family during this time. He is home from the hospital. He is healing, but we are asking as a church body to keep him covered in prayer throughout this time. And last but not least, we're going to ask for continued prayers for our pastor, for our for the shepherd of this house, Pastor Norman E. Carey Jr. Pastor Carey, we love you. Continue prayers for you. We are praying, pushing, and pulling for you. Remember that God can, and remember that He will do what only He can do best. Chappelle, we're going to ask that you continue to stay plugged into our virtual platform by way of Bible study um, on Wednesdays at 12 noon and 7 p.m. via conference line, our Sunday school at 9 a.m., prayer with the pastor on Tuesday mornings at 6 a.m., prayer with our gap ministry on Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m., and our couples Bible study on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. If we have any birthdays, if we have anyone who has celebrated a birthday over this past week, we would like to say on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Norman E. Carey, happy birthday to you. And as pastor would say, may you live as long as you want and may you never want for as long as you live. If we have any couples who have celebrated an anniversary on this past week, we would like to say happy anniversary to you and may God continue to bless you in your union and may you continue to keep him in the midst of your union. Well, Chappelle, it's offering time. We know that this is a part of service that we all can participate in. Our offertory scripture will be coming from 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, and it says, But this I say, 
He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Chappelle, be reminded of our three options for giving. You can text to give, you can mail your church offering into a new P.O. box that you see listed on the screen, or you can drop off your church offering to the church on the first and third Saturdays only from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Chappelle, let us repeat our tithing confession together. And it says, I am what God says I am. I live a life of purpose and fulfillment. Every need in my life is met because I have purpose in my heart to trust God in all things. I desire to tithe consistently. By faith, I bring my tithes and offerings in obedience and with thanksgiving. By faith, I plant them in good soil at Chappelle Memorial. By faith, we offer these gifts to you, God, to further your ministry. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the gifts, Lord God, that you so graciously have poured into our pockets, Father God. Now, Lord, let us not count it robbery to give back. You asked for a tenth, but let us give back the tenth that you asked for and even beyond, Lord God, to sow back into your kingdom, Lord God, for the uplifting and the building of it. Lord, we ask that you bless the hands and the position to give this morning, even the ones that are not. Lord, it's to your glory and honor that we give, and it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Chappelle, if you're ready for a word from the Lord on this morning, I'll share a morning scripture. By, uh, it'll be coming from Psalms 133. And it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Again, I've just read Psalms 133 in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. After selection, the next voice you will hear will be none other than our pastor, the Reverend Norman E. Carey, Jr.
Come on, let's give God a hand of praise today. I know it's just a handful, but let's give him a real hand of praise. Has he been good to you? Has he delivered you? Has he brought you? Has he kept you? Has he provided for you? I know he has. So we give God praise and glory. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Sister Green, for that selection. Band, thank you guys tremendously. Today is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. God loves you, and so do I. Now give him a stare right now. Amen. Give him a stare. Amen. We bless God for today. Bless God for each of you in TV land, those of you that are here today. We thank God. We give him all the praise and all the glory. He's a wonderful God. We've come to let him know today that we've come to worship him. This is his day. Every day is his day. But in particular, this is his day. And we want to let him know that we've come to worship him and to praise him. We bless God for Mr. Stewart, who was preaching here last Sunday and just tore the church up. We just had the final repair made on the church. The windows were installed, new paint, carpet, pews, amen. So it was in terrible shape. She tore the church up. So we thank God for her brother, her twin brother, Minister Gerard Fleming. We thank God for him. Again, the musician, we thank God for you. And so we ask that you would pray with us and pray for us. By you is right where you are. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Break us. Melt us. Mold us, and then, Lord, fill us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Lord, we've come to declare your word today. We've come to declare your word between heaven and hell. Father, we want to receive the word because we know that you have redeemed us. You paid redemption's price. For us to be in glory upon that day, that great day. So, Father God, we ask that we can hear this word, and hear your directions, and let it ring out in our hearts exactly what you are saying to us and what you expect from us. Forgive us of all of our sins and transgressions, because we have sinned and come short of your glory. We thank you, Lord, for those that are watching. We thank you, Lord, for those that are praying. Thank you for those that are witnessing. Thank you for those that are sacrificing. Thank you, Lord, for Chappelle Memorial Baptist Church. Great church, great church, great people. Thank God for them. God, those that may be wondering, let them know that we miss them here. We want them to come back. Give us a call. Check on us. Let us check on you. We love you. We thank you. Father, now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Listen, if you have your Bibles, turn to the portion of Scripture that Ms. Stewart read, the 133rd Psalm, first verse simply says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let's go read that A portion. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. And from that basis of scripture, I want to talk from the subject on this family day celebration, will the family survive? Will 
the family survive. That's a thought for us to ponder. That is a thought for us to take into our spiritual consideration. When we look at all that's happening around us, you can help but wonder sometimes, late in the midnight hour, early in the morning, during the lunchtime, will the family, the people of God, will we survive? Families being attacked, families being put down, families being discriminated against, and we wonder, are the members of the family going to stand up and speak their truth and see God manifest victory in our lives? Will we see the mighty hand of God move amongst us? Will we see God come out victorious? We've read the end of the story in the Bible, and the end of the story says that we will be victorious, but are we going to see it ourselves? It's our job to let other folks know that we're on the winning team, and we want to let the world know hey, only God wins. Everyone else loses. We want to give God glory and praise and honor. Well, when I came across this subject, will the family survive? I started looking around. I saw two families in particular that I wanted to analyze. On one hand, I saw Queen Elizabeth's family just lost her husband, Prince Philip. And then there's her son, Prince Charles, and his boo, his new wife, Camilla. And then I look back at his former wife, Diana, and then I can help but also to look at their sons, Prince William, and his wife, Katie, and Prince Harry, and Meghan. So I see that family on one one side. Look at the issues going on in their family. But then when I look on the other side of the track, I see the Floyd family, the George Floyd family. And honestly, I think both these families are struggling. I think Queen Elizabeth's family is struggling with all the issues that are going on there. Then I think George Floyd's family has struggled also. When you look at Queen Elizabeth's family, there's her son who neglected his wife Diana and basically chased her away, caused her to be with another man, and they had a wreck and she died tragically some years ago. And then she he got with his skip scan. Camilla, and they they hooked up, got together. But then look at what's happening between Megan and Harry. Interracial couple, biracial couple, and yet God's trying to work through them. This is the the, the supreme family, and yet they got issues as well. They're being attacked. They're trying to survive. They're trying to be victorious. But then we come back around to George Floyd and his family. Mother passed on where he said, on that ground, I can't breathe. He told his mother, I can't breathe. And after her death, he has never been the same. So I'm wondering whether it's the royal family or whether it's George Floyd's family, the concept of the family Will we survive? Many of us may find ourselves somewhere in the middle of those two families. Will we survive? And when I thought about it more, I asked God, I said, God, give me some revelation. Speak to my heart. Why is the family being attacked so? Why is the family being put down? You know, here in the United States, we think about all the discrimination we're dealing with in our state, in our country. And then you look at the royal family, you look at all the craziness they're encountering and enduring in their lives. And so, Lord, I want to know, are we going to make it? 
are we going to come out victorious? Are we going to be able to stand and say, only God brought me this far. My God helped me see the victory. My God delivered me. Have you ever been delivered? Has God ever brought you out? Has God ever fought any battles for you? Has God looked out for you? Has God stood in your behalf? Yeah. I need him to stand in my behalf right now. What about you? What about you, husband? Have you been a perfect husband? What about you, wife? Have you had some issues? Son, daughter, how you doing being a child? Auntie, uncle, grandmother, grandfather, how you doing? We comprise the family. We make up the family. And honestly, in 2021, we got to stop and pause and say, God, make it. When I look at all the issues that are going on, are we going to make it? Well, God, help me understand. Why is the family dealing with these issues? And I would say to us that the family, as we know it right now, is under serious attack. I don't know when the family has ever been under this kind of attack. Been attacked financially, been attacked due to discrimination, been attacked politically, been attacked mentally, socially, in just about every area you can name. The family is under serious attack. When you go to bed, you wonder, am I going to wake up? Many have gone to bed and not woken up the next day. So what's going on in our family? What's going on in your family? Understand the family was important and is important to God. God stands behind the family because the family represents the church. You got a strong family, you got a strong church. If the family is supportive, then you have support in the church. If the family worships God, then they'll do the same thing at church. If the family stands up for God, God knows they'll do the same thing for him. So the family, understand, is under attack. The devil doesn't like us. The devil doesn't like the family because there's a picture of togetherness. The f concept of the family is a biblical concept. It's a biblical tradition. And we're trying to maintain the family. But when we look at it, it's being threatened. The foundation is deteriorating. The highs are coming down and the negative elements are trying to rise up. So understand, family, you are on Satan's list. Yes, you are on Satan's list. Satan wants to bring the family down. Oh, we don't have a family like Leave It to Beaver, Warden June Cleaver. Don't have that family anymore. Don't have a family like Dennis the Menace. Don't have a family like the Cosby family. We don't have that family anymore. Families become so divided. Families become so segregated and issue responsive. But yet, the biblical family, and that's the family I'm concerned about, the biblical family is the one that God is really trying to promote. How about your family? How's your family doing right now? When's the last time your family had talk? When's the last time your family communicated? When's the last time you scratched each other's back, figuratively. When was the last time you stood on each other's behalf and on each other's behalf? When was the last time you said, that's my brother, that's my sister, that's my mom, that's my dad? Is the family coming together or is the family yet dividing? See, when we are divided, then there is no camaraderie. When we are divided, we don't know what God is leading us to do. We then tend to flesh, and God wants to move beyond the flesh and wants to operate in the area of the spirit. So understand, family, we are under attack. But then also, the family can be used as a powerful evangelical tool. I'm going to say it again. The family can be used as a powerful evangelical tool. Because if people in the world 
can see the family coming together, that'll draw them to the family of God. Yeah, we are examples. Now, if you're always complaining, and some of us complain all the time, when you see them, they complain about this. Oh, my wife, she ain't doing this. My husband, he ain't doing that. My son about to go crazy. My daughter, she had 14 chaps. There's always a complaint. <laughs> Got to get beyond complaints. We're testifying to the world, and the world saying, what's needing me coming to God? If you haven't had those problems, then I don't, I don't need to sacrifice and come to God. I'm going to stay where I am and do what I want to do. No. As a Christian family, we know that we belong to God, and we're here to do his bidding. We're here to do what gives him praise and honor. So quit complaining and understand that God wants to use us to be a witness. God wants to use us to show forth an example that he is alive. You do know he's alive. He's yet on the throne. Yeah, he sits high and looks low. So understand, you are a walking billboard. Your family is a walking advertisement to let folks know that our God is in charge. I say it all the time. Our God is large and in charge. No matter who you are. Don't care what side of town you live on. Don't care how much money you have. God is large and in charge. So then remember that. That we are a walking evangelical too. But then I think about the fact that George Floyd's daughter said something as she stood on Stephen Jackson's. Sh she was resting upon Stephen Jackson's sh shoulders. She said, my daddy is family. My daddy is going to change the world. My daddy is going to change the world. How she thought about her dad. My dad's death is not in vain. He's going to change the world. And we know what the hearing was this week. They got him to Chauvin. They arrested him, convicted him for murder, first, second. But that young girl, Gigi, seven years old, said, I know my daddy is going to change the world. Wow, what a testimony. In your family now, what are they saying about you? What's the word on you? What's the testimony on you? But I got one for Gigi. That's what her daddy did. But I wonder, does she know what her big brother did? Yeah, her daddy, her daddy changed the world. But her big brother Jesus had already changed the world some 2,000 years ago. Aren't you glad about that? That Jesus turned the world upside down. And I like it because my Jesus he walks with me. My Jesus, he talks with me. My Jesus has saved me. My Jesus has redeemed me. My Jesus has brought me out. Oh, yeah, one Friday evening, my Jesus died on Calvary's cross. Oh, yes, he did. He died from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. He died with a crown of thorns on his head. He died having been whipped all night long. Oh, yeah, he did something phenomenal, and I love him. I give him all the praise and glory. What about you? Do you realize that your big brother did something? I'm not talking about Henry. I'm not talking about Frank. I'm talking about your big brother, Jesus. He did something on your behalf. You ought to have a praise in your spirit right now. Right now, I ought to be an anyhow praise. You may not be feeling good, but have an anyhow praise. You may not be looking like you won't look but have an anyhow praise. It may be early, you haven't had your coffee, but have an anyhow praise because your big brother has done something. Your big brother before George Floyd changed the world. You ought to thank him. You ought to give him all the praise and all the glory. You ought to put those glad hands together and let him know, Lord Jesus, I appreciate what you've done. I thank you for what you've done. I don't want to preach too long today because I'm, I'm standing my legs getting a little tired right about now. But thank God for the opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk.
Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to stand behind the sacred desk. And thank you, Lord, for the institution of the family. We love the family. Thank you for the family members that we have in our church. Thank you, Lord, that have been here. We've been celebrating Family Day for almost 50 years. Almost 50 years. And we pause today in the midst of the hustle and bustle to say to the family, Family, we thank God for you. We trust you. We admonish you. We praise God for you. Because a family that works together, prays together, will stay together. Oh, we got issues. I got issues. I'm sure you'll admit you got issues. But yet, throughout our issues, God has brought us. God has delivered us. God has kept us. God has made a way. Yeah, so that's what we hear in church today, to praise him on his day. What about you today? Where do you stand with God? Are you in need of prayer? Are you unsaved? First of all, I want to extend the invitation. Are you unsaved? I invite you to come. Are you unchurched? I invite you to come. Have you backslidden? You want to come by letter? Watch care? I want you to come. If, you, if we were all here together, I would invite everyone to come down this aisle, this purple aisle, down to the front. Let me shake your hand. But let's do so virtually, right where you are at home. Shake my hand. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to the Chappelle Memorial Baptist Church. We want you. Why? Because God wants you more. We want to help develop you. We want to help you reach your all in all. All that God has for you. Did you catch that? I want all that God has for me. He ain't got to give me yours. If you don't want it, I'll take it. But he has a certain amount allocated just for me. And the word says, in so many words, that Confession brings about possession. Confession brings about possession. If I confess the blessings that God has, then he's obligated to provide them for me, and I receive them. So the invitation is extended right now. But then as we do that, there will be someone saying, well, Pastor, I'm already a child of God. I'm already a Christian. I'm already a member of Chappelle. But I need some prayer. I really need some prayer. So now we'll be led in prayer by Minister Gerard Fleming. By his. Lord, as we leave this place, God, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Father, for uh, your continuous love that you show us, Lord. Thank you for the continuous pulling that you give us, God, to bring us close to you. Now, Lord, as we close out in service on this family and friends, say, Lord, touch our families. Let it begin anew on today, God, not on tomorrow morning, but when we get off this service, God, we can go and tell a sister that we love her. We can go and hug a brother, Lord. We can go and hug our mom. Lord, we can talk to our sister we haven't talked to in seven years just to tell them that we love them. And if we can't say it with words, send a text. But Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for what you've done today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen.